quick. What land does Rivers of America sit in at Disneyland? Unless you said all of them, you would be wrong. Today, I'm going to show you how the Rivers of America flows through and touches every single land at Disneyland. We're going deep. We're going underground to explore one of Disneyland's most impressive engineering feats, the dark water system. From gravity-driven waterways to a 1,300-foot well hidden below Disneyland's surface and a secret function of Snow White Grotto's waterfall. Bricky here exploring the dark water system that wraps all around Disneyland. Welcome to the Storybook Canal Boats, a simply designed Fantasyland attraction with a much more complex secret you probably never noticed. And it's the highest point in Disneyland's intricate dark water system. But why, oh why, does that matter? Let me explain. The entire dark water system relies on gravity flowing from this elevated location through a complex network that keeps Disneyland and waterways moving all day long. Two million gallons of water cycles through the park daily and it all begins right here, where we're standing roughly 15 feet above the rest of the system. The dark water system starts right behind the Casey Jr. Circus trains, where the water is pumped and elevated to enter the canal around Cinderella's castle. The Storybook Canal boats aren't just charming Disney boats, they serve a functional purpose by helping create a gentle current that circulates water from this point onward. And a fun fact, a few hidden set pieces in the ride help with that same water circulation plan. And now, every time you pass by, you'll know that you're actually standing on top of Disneyland's hidden waterfall. Friends, when we stand in the center of the Small World Mall, you'll notice that the land here is very, very flat. But over towards Toontown, you'll notice that the grade starts to slope down. And the same thing can be said if we were to return back to Fantasyland proper. That's because this flat stretch that I'm standing on, this connects the Storybook Canal Boats to the old motorboat cruise. This is the old motorboat cruise dock, and it hasn't had a boat launch off of it since 1993. So why does it still exist? Long after the attraction has been retired and taken off the Yesterland, the dark water system has been largely unchanged for 70 years. It's a crucial part of Disneyland's infrastructure, and removing or altering it would be a massive undertaking, not to mention also expensive. The motor boat cruise dock is an essential part of the Disneyland dark water system that flows through all of Disneyland. Even today, the water beneath this dock flows through an underground network, helping to keep the entire system running smoothly. Removing or significantly altering this dock wouldn't mean disrupting a 70-year-old engineering masterpiece, one that operates almost invisibly beneath our feet. The park's carefully calculated design relies on continuous flow, and any major changes could throw the whole ecosystem out of balance. So now you know why they keep the old dock around instead of removing it when they retired the entire attraction. But as we continue our tour, I'll explain even more about how Disneyland's topography was carefully graded to include clever tricks to keep the magic alive and the water flowing. Now let me explain why everything starts flowing downhill from here. Once again, as we walk along the edge of Atopia, you'll notice that the land stays pretty flat but everything from Matterhorn over starts to slope down. We'll explain that. Have you ever noticed how the monorail pillars are really tall near the submarine lagoon, but suddenly much shorter as you walk toward Sleeping Beauty Castle? It's not just a coincidence or a random design choice. It's all part of the Disney magic. So the slight hill that we walk down to the castle, it's here to keep the water flowing smoothly downhill. This is another example of the carefully engineered landscaping that uses gravity to move the water through Disneyland's dark water system. So the next time you're walking from the Matterhorn down this little grade to Sleeping Beauty Castle, keep in mind that technically you're walking down Disneyland's hidden waterfall. How cool is that? <laughs> Hey friends, if you're enjoying today's wild subject matter as much as I am, how about you subscribe to Hey Bricky so you can go on this journey with me and we can learn about all this Disneyland design nerd stuff together because uh, we got to be the same kind of psycho to care about this stuff. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you even more for subscribing to Hey Bricky. I appreciate you.
Imagineers designed this area to appear as it was one continuous waterway. But the truth is, is that Pixie Hollow's water is part of a separate closed clear water system. It's a different system entirely from the dark water system we've been following. And that's why the little pond that sits here often looks very different, sometimes even murky or very overdyed like 2000 flushes. The water here used to have a small light and fountain show that not only gave guests surprise entertainment, but it helped keep the water circulating so that it wouldn't end up looking so stagnant. So when the fountains aren't running, this ends up looking like a bit of a mess. So the little pond that normally you can see behind me is another example of Disneyland's genius design using visual tricks to make guests believe everything is interconnected, even when in all actuality, it isn't. And if you pay attention, you can see in this little waterway that runs off of Sleeping Beauty Castle that it is indeed a dead end, but creates the imagination that it does go all the way over. So the water surrounding Sleeping Beauty Castle isn't just a pretty feature. It's an essential part of Disneyland's dark water system designed to keep the magic flowing continuously. The system relies on subtle elevation changes like the gentle downhill slope from Fantasyland to the hub to use gravity to keep everything moving along. And here's something most guests have no idea about. Snow White's grotto and the waterfall that you see, it just isn't a fairy tale ambiance experience. It's a cleverly designed mechanism that helps circulate the water all around the castle. The constant flow from the waterfall helps keep the water moving and maintaining that magical appearance that we all love. So know that this waterfall is actually kind of a water jet that pushes the magic all around the castle. Now, as we move over to the hub, the central point of Disneyland, where all the lands converge, there's another fascinating design feature. The creek that winds gently around the hub is called the Carnation Creek. This creek appears calm and serene, but it plays a crucial role in how its deceptive, gentle current is actually carrying the water from the castle into the wider network. The design creates a tranquil atmosphere at the heart of Disneyland, but in reality, it's part of a carefully engineered water management system that most folks will never know, and why should they? So as a designer, I love that every detail from the waterfalls to the gentle currents, it all serves a purpose, blending beauty with functionality. But there is so much more to discover as we follow the water to its deepest point in the dark water system. Hey friends, if you're enjoying today's video and you want to support Hey Bricky, a great way to do that is to grab your very own limited edition Paul Mark hat. We made some hats just for the holidays so you could look good when you show up at the park with your Christmas cap. Made with our friends over at Happy Jack Cap Co. A beautiful limited edition Hallmark hat. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you for supporting Hey Bricky. Now back to our video. I'm so happy you showed up. Happy holidays. As the water from Carnation Creek leaves the hub, it flows beneath the Tahitian Terrace Bridge and the entrance into Adventureland. From here, it travels along a narrow channel in front of the Enchanted Tiki Room and over to the Tropical Hideaway creating the illusion through this lush tropical environment. This creek then flows into the Jungle Cruise River, which is more than just a scenic waterway. It's a masterclass in Disney Imagineering. The Jungle Cruise River's depth ranges from three to eight feet, precisionly designed to accommodate the attraction's boats while also making maintenance and safety a priority. But the Jungle Cruise doesn't get all of its water supply from this small creek that, as we all know, starts all the way back at the Storybook Canal Boats. Before we get into how the water circulates through the rest of the system, let's talk about how the dark water gets its signature look of being, well, so dark. The water is dyed a greenish to brown color to mimic a natural sediment that would be in a jungle-filled river, where 12 pounds of dye are added to hide the tracks and mechanical features beneath the surface. It takes about three days for the dye to blend seamlessly to keep the illusion of an untamed river alive for Disney's guests. Near the Adventureland Treehouse, there is a 37-inch wide underground pipeline that can pump water 
into the Jungle Cruise, but can also let excess water flow downhill into the rivers of America, which is essentially the dark water system's gigantic reservoir. Now, back in the day, there used to be a bridge around here where you could easily see how the water would go from the rivers of America into the Jungle Cruise. But this landscaping has been changed so many times since that bridge was easily spotted. When they were filling up the rivers of America to try to get the, the, the shoreline and the baseline of the river right so it would actually hold the water, they only filled it up to a certain height because they weren't done making the Jungle Cruise yet. So if they would have fully filled up the river, they would have flooded out the Jungle Cruise and messed up all the hard work that Harper Goff was overseeing. So they only put enough water in to test their shoreline to make sure it was gonna work, but not flood out the Jungle Cruise. That's how simple all of this was back in the day. And even though the technology has changed, the footprint is largely the same and will remain the same probably for another 70 years. Another fun result of the dark water system is the giant hill that we all have to walk down and come back up in front of Pirates of the Caribbean. That shows you the downward slope, allowing water to easily use gravity to flow down to the rivers of America from the Jungle Cruise. Another little fun fact is that this spot of Disneyland was originally gonna be Tomorrowland. However, Walt realized quickly that they needed to put the Jungle Cruise next to the Rivers of America so Adventureland and Tomorrowland would quickly change locations on the map to keep the water flowing. So the water had so much to do with even where the lands were placed. The Rivers of America isn't just a beautiful part of Frontierland and New Orleans Square. It's the massive reservoir for Disneyland's entire dark water system. Therefore, this river is technically connected to every single land or touches every land here at Disneyland. Where this river connects to every other waterway we've explored, the river operates using a constant gravity flow with special valves and weirs controlling water levels throughout the park. Another fun little trick of the Rivers of America is the Mark Twain paddle wheel actually is designed to create the current and the river flow. The Mark Twain paddle wheel, when docked, constantly moves. This creates the current that is the Rivers of America. And places like Fowler's Harbor is where they monitor the water to make sure it stays precisely at its five foot and five inches. If too much rain comes in and the water goes up to five foot 10 inches, the Mark Twain can't flow on its tracks below. And therefore, the water will need to be released back into the Anaheim groundwater. Just another amazing thing that's happening at Fowler's Harbor that most guests will never know. Two million gallons of water are drawn daily from the low point at the back end of the Rivers of America near Frontierland. The original pump was located near the friendly Indian village, but when Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was built, the river was trimmed back a little bit, and the pump's exact location was probably shifted a little bit because it had to follow the water. But wherever that pump is, it's the starting point of the Disney water journey, elevating it up to the storybook canal boats and circulating through the entire interconnected dark water system of Disneyland. So somewhere in here is where that pump is at, hidden where guests can't see it, and creating that water journey. It's, it's in here somewhere. It's in here hidden somewhere. I'll find it. <laughs> Found it. Based on the previous location and having this mountain to house the water pumps and filtration system, my bet this channel is the return and the two beds that flank each side are to offer cover on low tide days. And nearby this area is Disneyland's well number one, which reaches a depth of 1300 feet below the surface level that we stand on. This is truly where the dark water system starts. This well was located behind the berm near Big Thunder Ranch area, but we all know that's no longer there because of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It provides the water that flows through almost every single land inside of Disneyland. And as you walk around the slight grade of Big Thunder Mountain on Big Thunder Trail, you might not realize this, but you're actually following the path of the underground water passage. Beneath your feet, 
being pumped from the rivers of America, flowing through a hidden channel, making its way back to the starting point of the dark water system. This subtle slope is another example of how Disneyland day one Imagineers use natural contours and gravity to keep everything flowing efficiently. Now that we've figured out how the water works, let's figure out the fireworks. Watch this video to see how Disneyland hides its nighttime show equipment right in front of your eyes all day long. Thank you so much for watching.